Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, September 23rd, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, as rioters continue to destroy their own neighborhoods in Charlotte, North Carolina, the mainstream media tells their dwindling audience that it's a peaceful protest. All white people are then, these are the rules of the debate. InfoWars prepares for live coverage of Trump versus Hillary on Monday night. And the debate commission denies Hillary's request for a step stool. Plus, no coughing allowed. And YouTube is going to fight the trolls by empowering an army of trolls themselves to censor content that they say might be offensive. <laughs> All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, just to underscore how crazy scared the Democrats are that they might actually lose this election, Here's another effort that they're trying to do to steal this election. The Department of Homeland Security is actually rubber stamping citizenships prior to the election. They're waiving security checks to register as many new immigrant voters as they possibly can. Now, this uh, Senate Republicans obtained an email showing a Texas immigration office demanding volunteers to work overtime in an effort to grant as many people citizenship as possible before the end of September. The July memo is from a branch chief at the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Houston office, and it said the goal was to approve as many citizenship applications as possible due to the election year. Now, Democrats and their pro-amnesty allies launched an effort earlier this year to help one million permanent residents become citizens and register to vote, but they fell almost 400,000 people short. So now they had an influx of nearly 600,000 new citizenship applications, but that completely overwhelmed the agency. So now they need these new volunteers to come in, work overtime, so they can process these applications, clear the backlog, so that they can get these people registered to vote. So they don't even care. They're waiving the security checks. They don't even know who they're bringing in. They don't even know, you know if they're going to even pass the citizenship t test properly. They just got to get them in. Get them ready to vote. Who cares if they even are going to have the values that we deem so important here to become an American citizen? This is what we're having to deal with this election cycle. It's absolutely crazy. Now, something big that just happened today, we've been telling you about this, uh, the Saudi 9-11 bill that would allow uh, families of the 9-11 victims to be able to sue Saudi Arabia thanks to the declassification of the 28 pages. Well, the White House vetoed that legislation today. And Obama, of course, came out and kept on saying that it, they're going to, the courts are going to end up wading into terrorism issues that are best left to national security and foreign policy officials. He doesn't want to have to become the victim of any of these foreign countries coming after him for war crimes, for all of the uh, drone retaliation and all of the innocent civilians being killed with his drone strikes. He said he's very good at killing people. And he also warned about potentially serious financial consequences for the United States. Of course, we know Saudi Arabia threatened to cut off all that funding. So here we are, once again, taking orders from Saudi Arabia. Owen Schroyer has more. Ladies and gentlemen, Barack Obama has just vetoed a bill that would allow United States citizens and the families of the victims of 9-11 to sue Saudi Arabia. Now, if you just want to make this as a plain Jane statement as possible, Barack Obama has just put the interest of Saudi Arabia over the interest of United States citizens. If that doesn't tell you who Barack Obama really is, I don't know what will. Folks, Donald Trump brought the 28 classified pages to light. Jeb Bush tried to act like they didn't exist. The mainstream media tried to act like they didn't exist. You were called a conspiracy theorist if you brought them up. Donald Trump brought them to the forefront. And now families are using that momentum to try to seek some truth and justice from 9-11. So what do they do? They want to sue Saudi Arabia. And guess who's right there to block their path? Barack Obama. Once again, folks, Barack Obama is not for the United States. He's not for the United States citizen. And I think that this story illustrates how Barack Obama puts the interest of Saudi Arabia over the interest of his own citizens. This is despicable. 
and disgraceful, but who would expect less from our current commander-in-chief? Barack Obama, you are more loyal to Saudi Arabia than you are the United States. This is Owen Schroyer from InfoWars.com. Senator Schumer and John Cornyn have spoken out about this, saying this is absolutely ludicrous, and of course it's going to be swiftly and soundly overturned in Congress. They've called this a disappointing decision on behalf of the Obama administration, um, saying it's a refusal to listen to the families of the victims taken from us on September 11th. If the Saudis did nothing wrong, they should not fear this legislation. If they were culpable in 9-11, they should be held accountable. The families of the victims of 9-11 deserve their day in court, and justice for those families shouldn't be thrown overboard because of diplomatic concerns. And quite frankly, threats from Saudi Arabia, but that's what we're dealing with here. Now, other things that we can uh, expect to have all of our eyes on are Hillary Clinton's wonky eyes in this upcoming debate. Now, a lot of people are really talking about the fact that her eyes seem to be all over the place um, in one of her uh, latest appearances when she wasn't, you know, woke up from one of her naps. Uh, but there's an article up at the Hill talking about Clinton's eye issues and saying that it appears she has a problem with her left sixth cranial nerve. That nerve ser serves only one function, and that's to make the lateral rectus muscle contract. And that is what is, helps keep the eyes in control there. It comes out of the base of the brain, runs along the floor of the skull, immediately beneath the brain before coursing upward toward the eye. Dysfunction of that could cause what we saw with, the, with Hillary Clinton the other day. Now, it really goes on to break down about uh, Hillary Clinton's report from her physician and why people are now calling for her to have a thorough neurologic exam and an independent one, not one performed by her physicians, but an independent physician that isn't bought and paid for by the Clintons, talking about uh, her physician reported that she was placed on Coumadin to dissolve the blood clot. But that's incorrect because Coumadin has no effect on an ex existing blood clot. It only serves to decrease the chance of further clotting. And the physician also reported on follow-up exam that the clot had resolved. But that's surprising since the majority of such clots do not dissolve. And the way that it was documented that this clot had resolved hasn't been reported. So, you know, here we have an anomaly that they say, just trust us. We've checked up on her. It's totally fine. It's gone. She's completely fine. And then they say it's most likely that she still does have this clot. The transverse sinus is still blocked. So that would cause increased pressure, swelling, decreased blood flow to the brain. That would place pressure on the exposed portion of that nerve at the base of her brain, which would explain her eyes and also that collapse that we witnessed um, in New York City on 9-11. And there again, they, they just demand that she undergo an independent neurologic exam, have proper studies to determine whether or not she still has this blood clot at the base of her brain, swelling of the brain, and increased intracranial pressure. And, you know, whether or not her brain injury, traumatic brain injury, by the way, is still going to affect her ability to do her job. <sighs> there you go, people. It's not a conspiracy theory anymore. A lot of people are now coming out saying, you know what, we really do need to get to the bottom of this. She ain't that healthy. And check this out. So here's just another way that we're having to deal with these people who are just wheeling this woman out. Like Matt Drudge said, she's going to be a brain in the jar there at the White House. They're doing everything they can to, to get her in, uh, like we saw with the FBI in investigation. Well, now the FBI has given immunity to her top aide, Cheryl Mills, and two other staff members. They were granted immunity uh, deals in exchange for their cooperation in the now closed FBI investigation. So uh, the, the, the Associated Press was told today that Mills gave federal investigators access to her laptop on the condition that what they found couldn't be used against her. What? So just like they didn't have Hillary Clinton testify under oath, then they also have one of her top aides who, by the way, was also allowed to represent her in this FBI investigation, she said at a, there was a certain time within the investigation, she had to turn to uh, her attorney, her representation, Cheryl Mills. How does that happen? How do you get to represent the client in a case that you yourself might be caught up in? How does that even work? But it does work because when you're the crooked Hillary Clinton, you get what you want.
So that's just even more craziness. Hopefully she'll be asked about it. Maybe Donald Trump will be one of the only people to bring it up in the debate. That would be rather exciting. Keep us on the edge of our seat. But don't worry. That whole FBI investigation, we're going to get to the bottom of it because it's now been announced. Most of Clinton's recovered emails will be released after the election, right after the election day. This is according to a new timetable that was set today by a federal judge. So they're doing every single thing they can to make sure that this brain in a jar makes it to the White House. If you want to know about all the countries that Hillary Clinton has single-handedly destroyed, look no further than our website, Infowars.com. There's an article up online right now. It's trending, written by Wayne Madsen. Wayne's going to be on Alex Jones' show later today and then the nightly news uh, tonight with Owen Schroyer. I want to take you through what he said. I encourage you to take a look at this 11-page article in its entirety. It's amazing. Uh, it's entitled, Here's a Handy Chart of Clinton's World Destruction. And then he goes on to write about what, uh, what uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell had written about Hillary Hillary Clinton. He basically said everything she touches turns to you know what. He said she screws up everything with hubris. And then Madsen gives this brilliant detailed list of every country that she's been involved in and single handedly what she's done to them. You know, Madsen talks about as, as uh, Clinton as Secretary of State, she threatened Belarus, Ecuador, Bolivia, Cuba, Somalia, Uzbekistan, and Peru with recriminations if they recognized a state that she was trying to ignore. Uh, he talks about her involvement in Libya, the gun aspect of what she did on the ground in Libya, what she's done in Syria, and what her actions have done that have led to the creation of ISIS. So we're talking about a woman that is on a major power trip right now. She wants the, the highest office in our land, and yet look at her track record. She screws up everything she touches. Can you only imagine the foreign policy regime that we're going to have if she gets her hands on the keys to the White House? Now, Wayne Matson goes on to talk about how Clinton's involvement in the Arab Spring resulted in the rise of Sunni Wahhabism and the Islamic State. Basically, she had a hand in the creation of ISIS in northern and western Iraq and Iraq's plunge and dissension into hell. He goes on to talk about in 2009 her involvement in Kosovo, uh, which led to the state increasingly becoming a state ruled by criminal syndicates and terrorists and former uh, Liberation Army officials, which we know were basically terrorists. So we need to take a look at Hillary Clinton's record. She has a lengthy past full of crimes. I encourage you, go to our website, take a look at this article. While you're at it, download our app, Infowars.com forward slash app. I'm Margaret Howell reporting for Infowars.com. Well, YouTube is taking another giant leap toward political censorship. No, it's not enough that they want to demonetize any videos that have controversial topics. No, now they're going all the way. They're hiring, well, actually, it's a volunteer army of trolls to fight trolling online. So this is the new Heroes program. And this is going to get an army of volunteers, going to give them the power to mass flag and delete content which they disagree with. So this is going to open the door to total censorship. Um, any, anything that they deem to be offensive, it could have cussing, it could have uh, topics that they don't like, it could be inappropriate. It's just willy-nilly, whatever they think. So these people are being called heroes. So no, now you're not just a social justice warrior, you are a hero. These people are total red shirts, and this completely explains why these tech giants are all for the United States handing over their power uh, as far as protecting the integrity of the Internet. It's President Obama's one last globalist push before he leaves office to hand over control of the Internet. They want to take away the power of the people, which has risen with the invention of the Internet, and they want to give it back to the dinosaur media who is going to continue to pump out their propaganda and keep everyone placated. This might have been one of our last free elections we might ever witness, folks. So it is pivotal that you pay attention. Stick around. Owen Schroyer will be joining me. Owen Schroyer from Infowars.com. Ted Cruz has just decided to endorse 
Donald Trump. There was a lot of skepticism. Would he endorse Trump? Would he endorse anyone? Is he going to kind of backtrack and support Hillary? But he has come out and said that he endorses Donald Trump. Now, this is just days before the first presidential debate. I wonder if that weighed into his decision to endorse now. Was this a political decision? Is Ted Cruz trying to cover um, being as he's a Republican and trying to get a little more momentum going in uh, perhaps another race for Senate upcoming? Or does he really like Donald Trump? Does he think Donald Trump is a good candidate for United States president. So Cruz endorses Trump. Will Trump now see a surge in the polls? There are a lot of people who don't like Trump that were Cruz fans. Maybe now they like Donald Trump. But this is a very pivotal time for Ted Cruz to come out and say he endorses Donald Trump just days before the first presidential debate. Now, Ted Cruz has been very good in his Senate seat fighting for internet freedom in America. Now Ted Cruz comes out and endorses Trump. Maybe we're seeing Ted Cruz turn a new leaf. The Bushes are going to endorse Clinton. Ted Cruz has decided he's going to endorse Donald Trump. So we'll stay tuned to see what else Ted Cruz has up his sleeve as this crazy political campaign cycle continues. YouTube has unveiled a new anti-harassment censorship tool that is going to be utilized by a volunteer army of Orwellian purgers. That's right, this is the new YouTube Heroes program, and it allows volunteers to use super tools to moderate the site, and it gives them special points from tasks such as reporting videos. Now you're not just a social justice warrior, but you can actually level up to becoming a hero in the Ministry of Truth. The tools are going to be available only to those people who are accepted into the YouTube Heroes program. And the better you are at reporting the videos that hurt people's feelings or content that just doesn't fit well with the globalist corporation's agenda, well, you get to go all the way to the tippy top of Snitch Tower. Now, you know what this reminds me of? China's social credit system. Now, this doesn't go into full effect until 2020, but it was first introduced last year. It was launched as a game, and it was basically how to teach people to behave the way the state wants them to. Now, this is going under the name of Sesame Credit. The government partnered up with China's largest social networks to generate something like the U.S. credit score, but it incorporates all sorts of online and offline data. It categorizes personal identity, credit credit card and other contract payments, social engagement, and shopping habits. Some argue that it's less of a credit score and more of a way to measure how obediently you follow the party line. The ACLU warned that among the things that could hurt a citizen's score are posting political opinions without prior permission or posting information that the regime does not like, such as about the Tiananmen Square massacre that the government carried out to hold on to power or the Shanghai stock market collapse. It will hurt your score not only if you do these things, but also if any of your friends or contacts do them. So in other words, people not only face the threat of becoming the target of state surveillance, but also losing their friends if they post any political views that are frowned upon by the state. So this is ultimately going to create a docile, compliant citizenry who only behaves because of the self-imposed group social control. Now, Paul Joseph Watson actually predicted something like this heading our way when he reported on this program in 2015. He called it a chilling prospect that could one day arrive in America if social justice warriors get their way. Well, my friends, I think that day has arrived. Now, check this out, because in 2016, China banned Internet news reporting, saying that companies have seriously violated Internet regulations by carrying news content that they obtained through original reporting. It's caused huge negative effects for the government. Now, just this month, YouTube cracked down on politically incorrect opinions. They started demonetizing any video that contain controversial or sensitive subjects and events. This includes subjects related to war, political conflicts, natural disasters and tragedies, even if graphic imagery is not shown. Inappropriate language, including harassment, profanity, and vulgar language, is also being demonetized. 
So YouTube's policy enforcement is going to completely disincentivize YouTubers from expressing any controversial opinions or discussing politically incorrect topics because they already know that they're going to be punished for doing so. And now this new YouTube Heroes program is going to ensure that enemies of the status agenda will not only be deprived of their income, but they'll be purged altogether. Now, we've already seen other sites like Facebook and Twitter uh, begin actively censoring prominent voices on the internet who counter the progressive agenda. And let's not forget, in a telling move, Lu Wei, the czar of China's draconian internet censorship system, paid a visit to Facebook offices in 2014, despite the fact that the social networking website is completely banned in China. This is the same year testing began on a pilot program here in the U.S. that could lead to a Chinese-style internet ID D system for internet users. Breitbart reported that Jigsaw, which is a subsidiary company of YouTube's parent Google, were working on multiple technological projects that would increase censorship and monitoring of users on all their services. Services which may soon include Twitter if they finalize a sale. Jigsaw's founder, Jared Cohen, said, I want to use the best technology we have at our disposal to begin to take on trolling and other nefarious tactics that give hostile voices disproportionate weight. We will do everything we can to level the playing field. So this is a very chilling statement because who gets to decide what voices are hostile and to whom? The state? The new world order? Because that's what this is all about. And perhaps the reason that these voices like Alex Jones and Infowars or Paul Joseph Watson have become so large and so powerful, so pervasive, is because people are hungry for the truth that can pierce through the programming. And now when Cohen says he wants to level the playing field, he's talking about taking the power away from the people, this power that has really skyrocketed uh, with the advent of the internet, and he wants to restore that power power to the state-sponsored propaganda channels like the dying lamestream media that has become totally ineffective. The Obama administration plans to hand over control of the internet to international authorities on October 1st. Critics of the move have pointed out that ICANN could be used by totalitarian governments to shut down the web around the globe, either in whole or in part. And not surprisingly, internet giants are backing this move to hand over control of the internet to globalists. Now, these corporations have become so large, they're more powerful than countries in some cases. And they've set themselves up to become a public utility, which has the power to cut off not only the income stream from new media, but also the information stream. I'm here to say, and this is the reason why I came to see you, Alex, is you are one of the very few who are operating under this, this, under this theory to be an independent American in a, as, in a big way. I don't know why they've been successful in pushing everybody into these little ghettos of these Facebooks and these tweets and uh, these Instagrams, these Instas. This is ghetto. This is ghetto. This is corporate. They're taking your, they're taking your energy. They're taking your energy and you're getting nothing in return. Nothing. They're dumbing the language down. Twitter's designed to reduce the language directly out of 1984. It's Ingsoc. Harmonious Black Lives Matter activists staged a peaceful protest in Charlotte last night, but were brutally tear-gassed by racist cops. Oh, wait a second. Physically attacking reporters is not a legitimate form of protest. Shooting each other is not a legitimate form of protest. Stealing and looting cash registers from local businesses is not a legitimate form of protest. Trying to set journalists on fire is not a legitimate form of protest. Throwing rocks off bridges at passing vehicles full of families is not a legitimate form of protest. <laughs> Beating up innocent people in underground parking lots because they're white is not a legitimate form of protest. Smashing up apartment windows where black people live to protest in favor of Black Lives Matter is not a legitimate form of protest. Smashing up buses that poor black people rely on to get to their jobs is not a legitimate form of protest. Looting the Charlotte Hornets team store so you can steal basketball merchandise is not a legitimate form of protest. Stealing sneakers is not a legitimate form of protest. Attempting to hijack cars and terrify their innocent occupants is not a legitimate form of protest. But how did MSNBC report on all this? By calling the rioters 
peaceful. The people that are out here protesting, they're hugging and they're like, <laughs> they're being very peaceful. We, we were following this crowd that was largely peaceful. Mostly peaceful. We've also seen some sweet scenes of protesters uh, hugging one another and praying. Mostly a group of peaceful protesters. Peaceful, 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 peaceful. And that's why 94% of Americans don't trust the mainstream media. What's unfolding in Charlotte is objectively, manifestly, provably not a protest. It's a violent, unjustified riot by criminals, gang members and thugs. Why is the media giving it legitimacy by still referring to it as a protest? If mobs of white supremacists were looting stores, setting fires, attacking journalists and shooting guns, would the media call it a protest? But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe all this was completely justified because another racist white police officer killed an innocent unarmed black man who was merely carrying a book. Oh wait, he was actually killed by a black cop. All white people are f***ing devils. But what kind of book was he carrying? Paperback? Hardcover? Oh no, it was a 9mm gun. Well, imagine my shock. So a black cop shoots an armed black thug with a criminal record, and then a black protester shoots another black protester. Yeah, must be white people's fault. I guess it's my fault for not checking my privilege. And how did de facto Black Lives Matter leader D. Ray McKesson respond to the riots, the looting, the bloodshed, the mayhem, the violence? By tweeting, we stand with you. Because nothing says justice like destroying your own city and living up to the very stereotype about black people that you constantly complain about. Hey, what's going on guys? Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. I just arrived in Uptown Charlotte, where last night a second night of protests turned into violent and deadly uh, riots. You know, we've seen this happen in Ferguson. We saw it happen in Baltimore. And I was very shocked and surprised when I found out this was happening in my own hometown of Charlotte. You know, originally when it happened on Tuesday, I was kind of set back. I was like, nothing like this is ever going to happen in Charlotte where I live. And I didn't think it would last more than a day. But last night, it turned very violent again. And right behind me is what should be a very active crime scene. This is where the guy was shot and critically wounded last night. And for some reason, they're allowing people to walk all over the crime scene. Uh, what we found out last night is the guy was shot, taken to the hospital, he had life-threatening injuries. Uh, we were told at first that he was dead, then it came back that he wasn't, and now we just found out that the guy has died from those injuries as well. Charlotte has been declared a state of emergency. The National Guard has been called, and as you can see right here in front of me, we have one of many Humvees that are in the surrounding area guarding businesses. Now, a parking garage just like this right here to my right is where you saw a video of a man, a white man, being beaten and dragged across the floor while his pants were being stripped off of his body. Over here, there is a large group of protesters, and that is right in the area where a man was shot in the head. Uh, come to find out, the guy has died. Last night, there were reports that he was in the hospital because he has sustained life-threatening injuries, and he has now died. So these protests have now turned into deadly riots that have taken one person's life so far. We also got information that the family of the man that was killed was brought in to view the dash cam footage from the police vehicle when the shooting happened. And what they said after they saw it, the family of the victim was no comment, which leads us to believe that the footage does not look good for the narrative that they would like you to think, that this man was not reading a book, sitting in his car, helpless and innocent like they say. The word is this guy was possibly rolling a joint and had a gun in his lap and the police showed up and there was an altercation. The guy didn't listen to police commands, didn't drop his weapon and was shot and killed. And this is one of the buildings that was vandalized last night as you can see with all the boards up on it. People decided to put signs up. It says an eye for an eye. Only ends up making the world, the whole world blind. A quote from Gandhi. And then we also have, if you want to make peace with your enemy, you have to work with your enemy then he becomes your partner, Nelson Mandela. Now, as you can see, there's a large crowd of people that are marching right here. Police station's right up here. This is the uh, the jail that's downtown. 
That was a large group of maybe, I don't know, a few hundred protesters out here marched up, and as they came up, you could see lights flickering and people banging on the window. Are those protesters that have been arrested over the past three days? Or are these prisoners that have been there for a while standing in solidarity for what's going on out here? I don't know, but it was interesting to see everybody come out, start chanting, screaming outside of the prison. There's people jumping the wall up to the prison, which is something that they don't see people jumping towards the prison, but uh, there's people running around now, <laughs> climbing up. <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> So look at this. I mean, there's so many people out here. Right now, it's pretty cool, calm, and collective. Not, no violence thus far, but there's people. Look at this. They're running around, jumping up here. If they can, and I don't know if we can see any more lights flickering on and off. There was a whole bunch earlier, but uh, look at this. Just tons of people, man. So there's a larger group down here. Let's walk over here and check it out. misinformation going on. Now, what you, kind of misinformation is there? Uh, the story from the cops is that the guy had a gun. He got out of the car a couple of different times. Yeah. But if you talk to the people that live in the community that know this man and know his routine, what he does every day, that's not what he was about. They said this man had a book on his lap. He got out of the car with his hands up. Now, everybody that lives there and is witnesses to the situation is saying one thing. It's the police saying something else. Now, uh, there's the videotape, which could clear it out for everybody. Now, I, I can tell you one thing for sure, two things for certain. If the tape showed and supported their narrative, the tape would already be out. That's right. Look at the color of our skin, all right? Every day we wake up, it's a problem. Every day. We don't know if we're going to make a home just for being out here. It's the color of our skin. And now, it's is, been is, like it, that. has it been this way for It's a been long, like this for 400 South. years ago. Yeah, but what about? It's still, it's still the South. Yeah. This is where they had the sit-ins at. I'm gonna give you a gem, something you don't know about. Around the year 2000, oh, there was yeah, a uh, there was a class at the uh, CMPD mm -hmm. where they got caught cheating on the test, and everybody from, everybody from that class got kicked out. But the year before that, the year before that, and the year before that, going three, three going three years three, three years back, all those people still in the police force. This, this might be some of the guys that's out here now. Mm -hmm. I don't know how big that story was, but it was real. And I know for a fact it was more than the, the people who got caught cheating. It's people before and it's people after. Mm -hmm. They should not be police and they're out here and they're real police. Look at this, sorry. Thousands of people out here right now. Cops are starting to yell right now. We heard police officers up on the bridge locking and loading their guns. The entire interstate right here is now blocked off. Come the riot police are now moving in. Hey, get over here, get over here.
sorry, guys, if you just go to the InfoWars Periscope. They have formed a human wall blocking off the interstate. We've got riot police coming up over here on the side. Ridiculous. That's that's uncalled for. You good? You yeah. yeah. Here, no, it's here. just going my eyes more now. Here. 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 Put that mask on. Ah. Sorry, man. I know it's vinegar, but it'll. Ah. Happen. You all right, brother? Yeah, yeah. It's all part of the job. Yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh, there's a mask. I can't see anything yet. Hold on. I'm freaking blind. Yes, please. Can you try your best to open your eyes? Smell it. Here they come. Come on, get up. Come on, they're coming up. Hey, guide me up because I don't know where the hell I'm going right now. I can't see anything. All part of the job. Welcome back. Owen Schroyer joins me in studio now. We are going to break down, you know, some what we think is going to happen in this upcoming debate. Now, Hillary Clinton, she's been a little MIA, except for that one angry shouting video that she was able to make in between her nap time. Donald Trump, of course, has been on fire, but I don't know, Owen, what do you foresee? <laughs> Well, this is, you know, for all the people who have been following this election cycle, for all the people who pay attention to Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, whatever side of this you're on, this is the postseason. This is the Super Bowl. This is the biggest thing. You know, all of these sports pundits want to sit here all day and pontificate on one game or one play. So this is our big game. This is our big pontification. You know, what I'm expecting, man, I don't even know. Who could have predicted all the stuff that we've seen through this election cycle? Even the craziest of conspiracy theorists, I don't think could have predicted all the stuff we've seen. Hillary Clinton's googly eyes, Hillary Clinton's <laughs> seizures, Hillary Clinton completely passing out, uh, Donald Trump's rise in popularism like we've seen. Uh, it's all crazy and it all kind of culminates and reaches ahead here with this debate. Now, I am expecting Donald Trump to absolutely mop the floor with Hillary Clinton. To me, this is like Mike Tyson in his prime getting into the ring with a 12-year-old who just picked up a set of boxing gloves for the first time in his life. It's simply not fair. It's simply ridiculous. I and don't most know. people should say it shouldn't even happen uh, just based <laughs> on ethics. But Hillary Clinton's going to get into the ring with Donald Trump. And what's she going to say? You know, we're, we're preparing. We're going to have great debate coverage here on Infowars.com. All of our reporters are going to be on the scene, breaking down every little angle. And we're going to be pointing out Hillary's lies. And we're going to be looking at what Trump says, too. But it's too easy, Leanne. We've been watching these debates, right? And we've seen what Hillary Clinton has said. She's going to lie, okay? She's going to come out. She's going to lie. And no one's going to check her on it. They and haven't thus far. And she's going to paint a false narrative. And we're going to be right here doing it. So the question is... How deep is it going to go? How, how deep is Hillary Clinton going to go on these lies? How far is she going to go? Is Donald Trump going to call her on it on the scene? Or are we going to see Donald Trump try to retract um, from getting into ad hominem attacks or calling her lies or crooked Hillary, whatever it is, and just stick to policy stick issues? To, yeah, stick to the policy. Because people do want to know. They want to see where he's coming from. And I feel like... The, the debate moderators might even at times try to throw him off a little bit just to get him off track, to get him to say something sensational that they're going to, that'll be in the whole news cycle for the next few days. It won't be anything about what he was actually bringing to the table. Now, just taking it back a little bit to, you know, her being unexperienced or whatever. Yeah, you know, she's very ill <laughs> and she needs the stool, but they're not going to let her have that stool on the debate stage. But she has been on the debate stage nearly 40 times. She's had a Senate run, two presidential bids. So she's been up there. She's, you know, she's an old pro at this. The, the thing is, is that she's never had to prepare for an opponent quite like Donald Trump. Who knows what kind of tactic he is going to take with this first debate. Everyone is, they're expecting this to be huge, 
one of the most important 90 minutes of this entire presidential election. And it'll be interesting to see how that's reflected in the ratings. This is probably going to be the best rated presidential debate, uh, certainly of my life, uh, maybe all time. It might even compete with sporting events at how good these ratings are going to be. This is what it feels like. And I, and I agree with you. Like you know, just, just because uh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton is very experienced in these debates, you got to keep in mind, Hillary Clinton is used to going up against controlled opposition. Hillary right. Clinton is used to going up against controlled media. And, you know, that's another question, Leanne. Do you think that, because obviously when Donald Trump has had these debates, the media has been against him. Mm -hmm. They've been trying to spin and twist questions and put him into a corner and put him in awkward positions. But I think that's kind of helped Donald Trump in this campaign cycle. He's won every debate he's been in. So will we see the media kind of refrain from doing that? Because now the media realizes they're unpopular and they don't want to give Trump the advantage. Right. That'll be an interesting thing to watch. Yeah, well, and, and he has already shown that he's not afraid to, to give the low blows. Like, he'll go there. He'll talk about how your brother was the president during 9-11 and why don't you ask your brother, you know? And he'll talk about Bill Clinton being a rapist and why are we going to have the first rapist in the White House again? to be able to get back into the Oval Office and do what he's going to do there. Like, he's not afraid to go there with Hillary Clinton. So she's, it's almost like, I, I just can't even imagine how her aides have been prepping her for this. I mean, just throwing, like, they're probably getting the opportunity to say the most awful things to her. We're just trying to, you know, prep you for what Donald Trump's yeah, going to say, just, Hillary. We're just prepping you, Hillary. I, I'm we not saying that you. about your husband. <laughs> Donald Trump might say that about him. My gosh, let well, it all out. And think about this, Leanne. What is <laughs> Hillary Clinton's biggest bat? What is Hillary Clinton's driver? It's I'm for women. I'm the candidate that's for women. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is not going to let her sit up there and say that. He's going to point out Bill Clinton's rapes. He's going to point out the fact that Hillary Clinton wants to be tolerant of radical Islam which is against women's rights. So Donald Trump's not gonna let her and take that bat out of the bag and swing it saying, I'm for women's rights. Donald Trump's not gonna let that happen. So what is she gonna do? Yeah, give the money back happens? to Saudi Arabia if you're so for women's rights. Give that money back to Saudi Arabia. If you wanna veto the 9-11 the bill, or she was one of the people that was in office at the time when they were holding off on declassifying the, the 28 pages. She was one of the people, she saw, but she's still taking money from Saudi Arabia, which is why I think she collapsed at the 9-11 memorial. Uh, but how funny is it that everything that they're doing uh, with the DHS rubber stamping citizenships to try to get in as many voters as they can, with the media being complicit this entire time for Hillary Clinton, with Google, with Twitter, with Facebook, with all the tech giants doing everything they can to sway the election in her direction. Even with all of that, it is her health that might take her out of this, that she can't deny. But I don't know. I mean, even there, she's admitting right in her FBI investigation that it was her concussion that made her unable to do her job and to um, know what was classified or not because she forgot about her training. You know, that was something when she had the opportunity to take questions from the veterans. And one of the veterans straight up asked her, you know, if I had done that, I'd be in prison. Why did you get away with it? And she doubled down and said that she never received or sent classified information and they just let her go with that. And this was after we even got to see what was in that FBI investigation that indeed at least 100 things that she sent were and received were classified. And then she made the excuse that her concussion made her forget her training. Like, really? And no one checked her on that. But we are going to be checking her in real time here with our coverage, uh, our, our crew here. We're going to try something totally new here with this debate. We're going to be fact checking in real time. We're going to be getting reports out on the fly to just, we're gonna be doing the fact checking because we know that the media isn't going to be. They're gonna let her get away with that like like they did last time. Well, and it's interesting you say that because as you said before, this is already a controlled debate or, or outside of the ring controlled where the whole technocracy is trying to pump up and inflate Hillary Clinton, a dying, lying candidate. But you know, and you can even see this illustrated. If you go onto YouTube or you go onto Twitter, Folks, Hillary Clinton has no support. If you go look at a Hillary Clinton speech on YouTube, the majority of the people watching that video are thumbs downing it. They're probably you can't, her volunteers that you are You can't even, I'm telling you, I'm on YouTube all the time. You can't find videos on YouTube that get thumbs, thumbs down at this rate. Nothing, <laughs> nothing, except Hillary Clinton. It's the only one. And it'll be interesting to see, like you said, is, I mean, Despite the lies, despite the health issues, despite everything, they continue to dummy up 
this corpse. They continue to put a bow on this polished turd <laughs> and act like this is some real candidate. But we know better. But is she going to be her ultimate demise? Her, is her health going to be her ultimate demise? There's nothing right. she can do about that. There's nothing the media can do about that. There's nothing all the other lying politicians can do about that. We see her out there. And you know, you have the Drudge Report today uh, talking about all the things that Hillary tried to get through for this debate to be to She her wanted advantage. a stool. She wanted those bathroom breaks. Think about this, okay? Nope. Hillary, this is very important, folks. This is something that was illustrated when they first started doing these debates on television. They first started wearing makeup, and the candidate that looked better on TV usually got a better response from these debates, no matter what was discussed. That's why Hillary Clinton wanted to stand on a stool, because she didn't want to look like she was being overpowered by Donald Trump. That's the optics that she wanted to control, because she knows she can't control the narrative. She knows she can't control the truth from now, uh, from, from now on. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. This is the Super Bowl for us. This is awesome. I can't wait. Everybody's been excited for this debate. I'm excited for this debate. I'm expecting <laughs> Donald Trump to get into the ring and just knock this witch out. <laughs> and you're actually going to be in New York. So that is super yeah. exciting. We're going to have you actually there on the ground giving us tons of reports. You're going to be outside, inside. All and we'll be the talking place. to people on the streets, too. Yeah, I, I think so many people are going to be really into this like it is the Super Bowl. So it is going to be super exciting. That is going to be coming up this Monday night at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to be going live. We're going to go live an hour before the debate. Uh, the whole crew is going to be all in for this. So we hope to see you guys there. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We'll see you here on Monday, 7 p.m. Central.